what I want to share with you is something that really changed my life. Uh, for those who doesn't know, I was not born on a Christian family. I became a Christ follower when I was 34 years old. And before that, I have tried everything in my life. And then I was in a pretty bad time, uh, you know, like uh, I was feeling a lacking of something in my soul. And I had tried everything. So I said, okay, I know that's just missing one thing. And this passage that I'm going to share with you now is something that really changed my life. And I want to share with you. It's in the book of John, chapter 14, verse 6. If you have a Bible, it would be good for you to open it. But I'm going to share on the screen too. Right, Sam? Great. Okay. So let's read together this passage. And Jesus answered, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No, no one comes to the Father except through me. Let me read again. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Let's pray. God, this is your scripture. This is something you said to us. This is the truth. Open our mind right now, Holy Spirit, our ears, in a way that we can understand the meaning of this passage. Only you can do that, Holy Spirit. Use me. I'm not able to do that, but you can use me to share so important scripture with my brothers and sisters. In the name of Jesus, amen. Amen? Okay? Are you guys hearing me well? If you guys are listening to me well, click on that uh, thumb like this, on, and then I will see that you are listening to me well. Okay? Otherwise, Sam, there will adjust the volume, but I think you can. Okay. Uh, I have my guidelines here not to get lost. A um, few time ago, I think a few weeks ago, I was having a nice conversation with a nice person. And it was a conversation that I had for so many times in my life with other people. The guy was telling me that uh, he doesn't like religion. He's not a religious guy. He likes something of that religion. He agrees with something of that other one, maybe the other one. But he's not a religion guy. And, uh, and Jesus, this kind of Jesus, he doesn't know exactly how to deal with that. Well, when he told me that, my answer for him was, <laughs> you're not a religious guy? So I am not too. I don't like religion. You know, Jesus Christ, he was not evangelical. He was not Catholic. He was not Buddhist. He was the son of God. It's not religion that changed my life and your life. It's the person of Jesus Christ. And it's so interesting because when I was talking to people about that, uh, who is Jesus, right? Uh, because I was talking and I, and I told the guy, what year are we now? That's the question I do for you now. In what year are you now? Probably you are answering 2020. You know why? Because in the most part of the world, we count of our years according to the birthday of Jesus. Can you believe a man that impacts the society so much that even the years we count on is according to his age? Don't you think that this man deserves more attention? Don't you think that a man like that would deserve your attention to know a little bit more of him? We read so many biographies of people that impact the world on psychology or economy, but no one did what he did. So, uh, I would challenge you to come with me into this journey and know a little bit more of Jesus. Not only now, because that's not what I'm going to talk today about the person of Jesus, but we will have time to do that. 
But who is Jesus? When I see Jesus, he can be, in my opinion, four kind of people. He can be a liar, right? He can be a lunatic, like a crazy man. He could be just a nice man. Or who could, he could be the son of God. When I see these first three options, a liar, a crazy man, or a nice man, I do not think that's real because he, he not just told good things. He made amazing things. He made miracles. You know, like uh, he made the sick be healed. He made the lame walk, the blind see, the deaf hear. He came to a woman like the Samaritan woman. And, and he, he told things that only she, she knew. Nobody knew that. And he told her. So a man like that, that did what he did, cannot be a liar. Cannot be crazy and cannot be just a nice man. But if he's not one of those ap options, what do I got? The son of God. But if I believe that he's son of God, so now I'm in a different position. Because I must be a kind of crazy to start following advice of another person that has not done nothing as good as Jesus. And not follow the Son of God advices. I don't think that's a good idea. If I got advices from God, why wouldn't I follow? Maybe because I'm afraid. I'm afraid to jump into this journey. Right? And what I'm going to get there. What's going to happen to me? I remember uh, one day, it happens more than a time, but I remember a guy that came to me and said, Hey, Pastor, uh, you tell me that becoming a Christian, uh, you are free. You receive freedom. What kind of freedom is that? A freedom that you cannot get drunk. You are free, but you cannot have sex. You are free, but you cannot do lots of things. What freedom is that? And then I answer him, you are free to say no. You are free to say no to that things, to those things. Sorry. Uh, Sometimes you think you're free. As I was thinking I was free, but there are a few things in my life, in your life, that you really don't want to keep doing that. But you don't know why you always do that again. And so this is the freedom. He gives us an opportunity and he empowers us in such a way that we are able to say no. Don't be afraid. Jump with me. You know, like uh, I want to share something about this passage, the way, the truth, and the life. And he said, no one comes to the Father except through me. Uh I was one of the things that I was talking to the guy is like uh, eternity. And then he said, I don't believe that he is the only way. Because here's on the scripture said, except through me. Well, what I can tell you is, he is the only way. Even if you don't like it, even if I don't like it, he is the only way. And it's interesting. Uh, about eternity because I asked the guy do you want to go to eternity he said of course and he said yeah so do I but I want to go to eternity on the good side not eternity on the bad side and if I got a road that leads me to this eternity and it's telling me hey this is the only road why would I try other roads Imagine you coming into a hiking to a very nice place. And then when you get it up the hill, you'll see a sign and it's telling, this is the only way to be in the summit. There's no other way. And then your friend comes to you and says, no, I'm going to try to see if it's other way. Hey, it's written here, it's the only way. Believe it. Believe it. No, I want to try the other way. You will get in danger, you will lose yourself, 
and you lose time in our life because it's written here is the only way. And why it's the only way? Imagine that you make something very that you do something very bad for Pastor Jim. He's very sad with you, like uh, you know, you do something bad for him. And then I come to you and I say, "Hey, I forgive you. Be free, because you know what you did for Pastor Jim. I forgive you." But can I? No. Only the offended person can forgive. Only Pastor Jim, right, Jim, can come and forgive you for what you have done to, to him. That's the thing. I want to share a passage here. Romans 3. Can we go there? I'm going to read with you. Romans 3, 23, 24. For all have sinned and fall short for the glory of God. And all are justified freely by his grace through the redemption that came by Christ Jesus. Jesus created, created men and women, his image. But disobeying him, we lost that image. And we lost connection to God. That's why our soul claims for connection. And we try doing this religions thing. Religions come from the world, religari. That means trying to reconnect. We are all disconnected from God. And only God could forgive us to turn our back to him. And he did. And he sent his son, Jesus, to do this reconnection. Do you understand? Do uh, you know what I mean? Are you coming with me now? So, uh, coming back to eternity, there's only one way for me to go to that eternity. The way that he said. But it's something nice I, I'd like to share with you about, about the way. Uh, I'm here in Nelson, BC, lovely city, with so nice people like you. And I intend to go to Castlegar, right? I have a meeting in Hortons there. I miss in Hortons. I love it. And then... Ah, Boston cream. Oh, man. <laughs> I miss Boston cream. But okay. And then I had to go to Castlegar. If I want to be in Castlegar, there's a way, a road that leads me to Castlegar. I have to take that road. And then, now, if I run that road, I will reach my point and be in Castlegar and in Hearts and get my Boston cream. But if instead of getting that road, I start to get another road, Thinking of being castle girl, I will not. I start going to Castle and think, no, I'm gonna be there. No, you will not. Because you're in the wrong way. And I want to share a little bit of the wrong way, and I want to also share a little bit of being stuck in a way. Are you with me? Let's go there. Uh, I was reading a blog that my pastor Jim wrote, and I really like to read his blogs, not just because he's in front of me. I really like that. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> there are some signs that show us that we are in the wrong way, right? Maybe broken relationships. You know, it's, uh, it's so hard for you to keep a relationship. Depression. I was, when I, when I decided to convert, I was kind of depressed. Emotional dysfunction, you know, up and down, up and down. Obesity, financial cause, that caught me too. I was like uh, going down. And, uh, and I said, you know, I tried so many things. Let's try this. I'm, okay, I'm going to jump on the road. Unhealthy fears and incessant anxiety, too much anxiety. Anxiety is killing all of us. And during this moment of these crazy things, we don't know what's going to happen, like how, how it's going to be next week, how it's going to be next month. We got so anxious, right? So anxious. But if you're on the right road, no worries, because on the right road. 
So these kinds of feelings that will show that you're not on the right way. And it's always time to pull the brake and convert it. They, when a, someone gets Christian, they say, uh, you converted to Christianity. Why? Because I'm coming on this way. And then I decided to do like this. So I come back. It's never too late. Maybe today you're listening to this message because it's time for you to turn your way. To find another way. To know that's possible. And it's not painful. It's so good. But there's someone that doesn't want you to go that way. So he starts screaming and telling in your ears, Hey, don't go there. You're going to lose everything. You're going to lose who you are. They're going to manipulate you. But no, no. He is manipulating you with these ideas. He is manipulating you. Holding you under his hands. And killing you day by day. But there's a road that sets you free, can bring you full life. I am the way, the truth, and the life. The only way for me and you to have this full life is running through that way. You know, everything changes into good. I, I, you know, I, I, it's it just like uh, I can tell you. But I cannot give you that. You have to come with me and you have to try it. And then you know that I'm telling the truth. And it's not painful. It's so good. Today is a day for you to think. Yes, I want to know more about this man, Jesus. I want to know more what he has done to humanity. Why are so many people following him? Why that? What is this full life? Because I, maybe you are you're, you're telling yourself, I do not have a full life. But I think that's normal because everybody around me does not have full life. Really? Because a lot of them are in the wrong way. You're surrounded by people in the wrong way. Come with me. Come with me. I want to show you this way. Because when you talk about the way... Uh, imagine you come, I, I like to do this parallel, but uh, imagine you come in, now you decided to go to the way. And then you decided to follow Christ. And then you say, okay, from now on, I want to know more about this Jesus. I want to participate of some meetings for me to know more about him. And I want to go on the way. And you start coming to the way. As lots of us are doing that in the church. When I see people in the church, I see lots of people coming, lots of people that is there on the road, some of there in the beginning of the road, some in the middle of the road, some are up there, but all of us are in the road. So imagine you going to a nice, a very nice beach, like uh, a place in Brazil we have lots of, or here in Canada, a lake. You go to a very nice lake, very beautiful lake. But during your way, you see a small lake, dirty lake with mud, but it's a hot day, and you decide to stop your car. And you go there, and you step into that water, dirty water, but you know, like, a, yeah, it's a kind of refreshing, it's good, and you stay there. But there's a better lake waiting for you. <laughs> you know, get out of there. Get out of there. But you're stop. You're stuck on the way. And sometimes I see people stuck on this way for so many years. They come into the church, but they not go forward. You know, like, I, okay, okay, I accepted to follow Jesus. But nothing happens. But you're stuck in a way. Come, come. There's, you know, the way. And then the truth, and then the life. For you to reach the full life, you have to run the way. You have to go the way with me. Doesn't want to talk with you now. Like uh, there are a few things that I, I, I really learned in my life. I want to share with you. That's the growing time. Because some of you, I know, that in a church for so many years. And some of you are stuck it and even don't know that. 
Don't know that. Because you have gotten a little bit better and put a break. Let me talk about four windows. You know that I could tell four windows of a sinner. When you become a Christian and you accept, follow Christ, you jump into the first window. You try to get rid of all of those sins that you commit. All the wrong things you do and everybody knows you do. So you stop betraying your wife. You stop being a violent man, you know, uh, because everybody knows. And you know, so you clean that. And when you clean that, you feel good. But some of us put the brick there and think, okay, I'm, I'm clean now. I don't see much things. But then uh, you are growing maturity and you get into the second window. It's that sin that nobody knows you do. The wrong things. Nobody knows I do, but I know. Like a pornography in internet during the night that nobody knows. That little thing in my job that I steal and nobody knows. You know those little, little, little things that I know I do, but nobody knows. But uh, now that I'm growing in maturity, I know that not nobody knows because God knows and he's with me. So I have to stop doing that too. And then I clean that on my life and now I become much better. I can even think that I'm a perfect Christian. <laughs> I look at me and I don't see sins anymore. Huh? I'm clean. Let's take a life like this. For the rest of my life, I just keep like that. But there's the third window. The third window is the wrong things that everybody knows you do, but you don't. You can see that, but everybody sees. And why is that so difficult? That's difficult because you have to be humble enough to accept. You have to be humble enough. Humiliate yourself and say, oh God, if Pastor Jim is telling me that I'm arrogant, am I arrogant? I'm not telling that he told me. Did you, Pastor? <laughs> well, yeah, I gave, but like, uh, and then he told me, you are so arrogant, Alex. And then I say, no, I'm not. Who do you think you are? No, I have to come and say, oh gosh, he thinks that of me. Am I arrogant? And maybe I find that I am. I have to change that. And becoming a better Christian. This window never close because people are is people are always coming to you and teach you things and, 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 and helping you to get better. And there's the fourth window. I love that. It's that one that when you are in your room and you are praying and you know like uh, you deliver yourself into the Holy Spirit and you're praying with him for the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit comes to you and tells, hey, change this. Hey, I don't like when you do that. You make me sad when you do this. Oh, my God, it's it like a knife into my chest. <laughs> I don't like to make the Holy Spirit sad, but sometimes I do. But when he tells me, I change. I can accept in my life committing new sins, but I cannot accept my life repeating the same sin. If I'm repeating the same sin, I have really to think. If it's so hard to get rid of that, call for help. Pastor, can you help me? Can you help me? Because I'm having difficult. I remember that when I got married, uh, there was a few things in my life that were so hard for me to change. And, you know, I asked my wife, be with me, pray with me. I need to change that. And so hard. Oh, for God's sake, I have a mature wife. So <laughs> she really helped me. I want to share something with you. Book of Hebrews, chapter 6, 1. Are we there? Let's read with me. Therefore, let us move beyond the elementary teachings about Christ and be taken forward to maturity. 
Dispatch is telling me and you, hey, do not get stuck in a way. Go. Walk. Run. There's so many things to learn. Second Peter 3.18. Read there with me. <laughs> But grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus. Know more about Jesus Christ. To him be glory, both now and forever. Amen. He said, hey, 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 learn more. I was talking to Pastor Jim today in the morning, and we were sharing that. The amazing thing about the scriptures is that I always learn. To the last day of my life, I will learn. I will learn with him. I will learn with Anne Marie, with Brad, with Sam, with you. I will learn. I do not know all the things. I'm always learning. But what I have learned... I have to teach. And pastor, how do I get maturity? Let me get my glass of water here. Oi. Pastor, if I don't if I want to run that road, I want to be on the road. I want to grow in maturity. I want to give you some tips. First, read and study the Bible. Imagine that God gave us a book. I want to share with you 2 Timothy 3, 16, 17. All the scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness, so that the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. This passage tells me, hey, you know this scripture, the Bible? All of them was made by me, Holy Spirit. I breath all of that. Each word I told. It's not man thing. And it's interesting because when I read the Bible, when I study the Bible, sometimes I can face something that I, I may not agree. I don't think that that's right. I think I would like that to be different. But I learned in my life that when I disagree with something in the Bible, I come to myself and say, hey, where am I going wrong? Where did, wh what did I, where did I get lost? Where am I doing wrong? Because the scripture is never wrong. It's made of God. God made that. <laughs> so I cannot take one part of the Bible because I like it and the other one that I don't like, I throw it out. So I'm not on the way. I'm again trying to do shortcuts. Remember the shortcuts that, doesn't, that lead me to nowhere? <laughs> the only way is His way. And, but as more as you learn about the Scripture, easier it gets. So, this is a tip. Study the Bible. We got the Bible. Read that. And sometimes you're going to read and it, it, it makes no sense. You're not going to understand. That is where the church is. The church comes from the word ecclesia. Ecclesia means those that were called out from somewhere. We are together, the church, not this building. This building is a temple. Church are people together. So you can come to the church and ask. If you've got someone that's more mature than you, you come and ask. You can come to me and say, hey, Alex, I didn't understand that passage. And I can show you, discuss with you. I can come to Pastor Jim and say, Pastor Jim, I didn't understand this. Teach me. And I can learn from him. We can learn from each other. But, you know, like, uh, I cannot read something. I don't understand and close it. No, because this is the meaning of my life, of your life. Remember, reaching full life? Do you want to have a full life? I want to have a full life. I am having. I, believe me, believe me, I have. You want to have a full life? Come with me. And then, another tip. Pray all the time. Pray with us in the church. Pray at your house. Pray in your room. I'm willing to teach you how to pray if you don't know. <laughs> Be full of the Holy Spirit. Oh, man. Can you believe that, you know, like a Jesus, he was here. And then he said, I'm going to heaven, and I'm going to be on the right side of my dead God. But I'm going to live here with you. God, 
through the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is going to be here with you to empower you, to teach you, to lead you to a new place. Yeah, we have them. We have Him. So, pray, read, be with us, learn with us. As soon as we come back here, and it's going to be soon, please, God. But I was talking to Pastor Jim and, and, and people on the board that I would love to start a Bible study in the morning. Like a first step for those who are coming. And another middle step for those who are here for a while. But you have to grow because that's what we're made for. We learn and teach. We learn and teach. I find the full life, I show you the full life. How to be there. You find it, you show it to another one. That's the amazing thing. So, uh, let me go here. Not going to take longer. So, Jesus, this way, leads me. Leads me where? To the full life. But when I'm running into this way, I go to another step. Remember, the life, the truth, no, yeah, the way, the truth, and the life. I am the way, but now I find what during this way? The truth. What is the truth? About me and you. And sometimes I don't like the truth. For example, the truth that I am disconnected from him. The truth that I do wrong things, even if I don't want to. The truth that I am a bad person. Oh, but ah, you seem so nice. No, I'm selfish. Everybody is. I think of me first. You know, I don't like everybody. I try to love everybody. But the truth about me, what is the truth? The truth that you and me have one destiny. You and me had one destiny, eternity, and not on the good side, on the bad side. You and me have turned our back into the Creator, God. That's the truth. And it, well, you know what is interesting about truth? Truth is, what is truth, Pastor? <laughs> truth is something that doesn't matter if I agree or not, it keeps being true. You know? If I put my hand on fire, I'll burn my hand. That's truth. Ah, but I don't like to burn my hand. And I don't think that's going to happen. So it's not going to happen. Ah, it's going to burn my hand. Because that's truth. Truth is something that, it, it doesn't matter if I agree or not. It doesn't matter if I think it's right or not. It's truth. And this is truth, man. You and me, we're disconnected from him. And another truth that you find during the way. That Jesus is the only one. He was the offended one. He's the only one who can forgive. He can reconnect us. Nobody can. Oh, but I heard that there's a guy that he cannot reconnect you to God because he's not come from God and he was not the offended one. Only Jesus, the offended guy, can reconnect you and me to him. That's the truth. The truth of what is good and bad, that I have to change some things that I like. But I like to do that, Pastor, and I don't think it's bad. Everybody does. What do you learn? Yeah, the truth is telling me that's not good. So it's not good, my friend. Maybe you're not seeing now, but you'll see in the future. And you'll come back not on time. Like uh, you and me, we have total control on our decisions, on our actions. But we have no control at all on the consequences of the actions. You know, these deep concepts of true life and the real prosperity. God, God, you know, like this full life is a life of prosperity. Oh, I'm going to be rich. No, not that kind of prosperity. The prosperity under the eyes of God. Like, uh, it doesn't matter if I'm rich, if I'm poor. I have peace. I am happy. I have a good family. I have good friends. I have an amazing life with my wife and kids. I have peace. <laughs> peace. Can you believe that? Can you believe that? That's prosperity, my friend. But the evil can tell you that prosperity is making money. It doesn't matter if you lose your family. It doesn't matter if you lose your wife. It doesn't matter what you lose. Make money. That's prosperity. That's not. 
because I've met so many rich people committing suicide. I don't think they're trying to get rid of your life is prosperity, do you? I don't. So, I'm concluding now that when you go into the way and you start finding the truth, you have to deal with those truths. You will have to deal with that. And every truth that is revealed for you and for me I will have to deal with that. What I'm going to do, I'm going to understand that that's truth and change that in my life. Oh, I'll try to get away from this road, get a shortcut and lose myself. Sometimes not easy, sometimes not good truth. But you know, like uh, I have to change that. Now I know. I, I didn't know, but now I know. So if I know, I have to change it. You have to deal with the truth. Otherwise, you will not reach the full life. The way, you jump to the way, start running. During this running, you by finding truth. And you reach full life. Full life with Him. Here on earth. And eternity with Him. I want a full life. Do you want? I want. So... We have to go there. We have to run. We have to learn. Grow in maturity. Learn and teach others. I challenge you. Don't lose this opportunity. Don't lose this. You know, like you can change your life today. Can you believe that? You can make a life better. And even you that in church, now it's time to grow. It's time to go forward. Come with me. Come. I need you. I need you. Me, Jim. All this church, we need you. <laughs> and people must find this truth. I like the passage that Apostle Paul says on the book of Philippians 3, 13, 14. Read with me. And so Paul writes. Brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it. But one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining toward, toward what is ahead, I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me, heavenward in Christ Jesus. I don't know everything. I, I, I'm rich in the full life. I have a quite good life, quite good part of this full life that God has given me, but I know there's more for me to achieve, and I run on the road, I do not step because the price, the bigger price would be my eternity with Him, and I, I will not step back, I will not stop, you know, no, I will look to my side and I'm going to see you running with me, I'm going to see you, because today something great was revealed for you. And your life is being changed. I'm going to tell a story to finish. One day, years ago, years ago, in a small town, there was a thief. He was an assassin. And he was arrested. He was in the jail. And in that city, they have death penalty. So the guy was going to be hanged. Hanged. He will die. But Easter was coming, and the people in the small town were so passionate, said, hey, let's talk to the governor. And ask the governor to forgive him, not to kill him. Because only governor could release him from that. And they went and talked to the governor. And the governor said, you know, I'm going to talk to him. I'm not going to decide right now. I'm going to talk to him first. And then the governor went to the jail. But he disguised himself as a pastor. Nice suit. Not like this. Like a nice suit. A Bible underneath his arm. And got into the jail. When he was approaching this assassin, this guy looked at him and said, Get out of here. I don't want nothing with you, preacher said, hey, wait, I have something here that can change your life. No, 
Get out of here. If you come here, I'm going to beat you. You know, get out. I don't want to hear the things. Get out. Get out. Get out of my life. And then the governor, this guy, is a pastor, said, you don't want it, really? It will change your life. I don't want it. Get out of here. I'm going to kill you. And then it was getting, you know, like a bad moment. And then the, uh, the chief came there and separated. And the governor said, okay, I'm leaving. And when? And when the governor left, the police station chief, he came to this guy and said, you know what you did? Do you know who that guy is? That guy is the governor. Do you know what was inside the Bible? Was a letter to set you free. But you did not accept that. You kicked him away. You lost the opportunity. And then on the day that that guy was being hanged, he was there red. They put the rope on his neck. And they asked, do you want to say Something before you die? And he said, yes, I want to say. I want to say that I'm not dying today. Because the wrong things I have done in my life. I'm dying today. Because of the redemption opportunity I rejected. Don't lose this opportunity. Nobody goes to hell because do good or bad things. People go to hell because they reject Christ. The truth, the way, the truth, and the life. And you, will you reject or will you follow? Come with me. I want to pray with you. I want to do two prayers. I'm going to ask Brad, can you come with us and then start playing his song while I preach? Pray, sorry. I want to pray with you. If you today... Notice that you're in the wrong way. Feel today, notice that it's time to accept this redemption. It's time, hold on, it's time for you to reconnect to God. You want to do that. You want to know more about Jesus. I want you to repeat with me because Jesus is listening to you right now. Put, put, put your hand on your heart like this and repeat with me. Okay? Repeat these words. You can start playing something for me, please. And you, you repeat this word. Dear Lord Jesus, I pray to you. Today, something was revealed to me. Today I notice I am on the wrong way. But I want to change that. I want to become one of your followers. I want to be a Christian. I want this full life. So, Jesus, I decide with my free will, I decide to follow you. I decide to accept you as my Savior and my Lord. And from today on, I will not be ashamed. To tell I am Christian. Woohoo! Thank you. You did that. You know you're not wrong. You, you, you're on a different road now. Come with me. Come with me. Nice. Oh, thank you, Lord. But there's another prayer that I want to do with you that I already had accepted Christ, but you are stuck. It. And during this preaching, you notice that sometime, somewhere, you pull the brake. Maybe you had some reasons that could lead to that. Maybe something happened in your, in, your, in, your, in your life that you got mad with Christ. Or you even don't know why. But today you decide to do different things. Today you decide to come back to the road. To start to run in the road again. And to go forward, forward, forward. Oh, I know that you want to go forward. Come with me. I want you to pray with me. Oh, you know... Like uh, put, your, put your hand on your heart and, and repeat the word with me. Dear Lord, today I notice that in a certain moment of my life, I pull the brake. I stop it running. But I want to come back running again. Give me strength, Holy Spirit. Lead me to a deeper relationship with you 
Help me to be with my brothers again. I want to be there. And I decided. And after deciding, I, I, I got an action. I will do that. I will be there. We will be part of meetings. I will come to my church. You know, if you're here in Nelson, you can come be with us. But wherever you are, there's a church be, beside you, near you. Go there, talk to your pastor. But come back to the road. There's a full life waiting for you. We want to help you. And God is listening to this prayer. Thank you, Lord. I bless you. In the name of Jesus. Holy, as I was told to do by him, that I should lay my hands on you guys. And I'm doing that even by distance. I bless you. You know, and the light of Jesus will shine on your face. And wherever you go, people will see something different. We'll see a smile on a face that was always grump. There will be a smile. And people will ask why. And you say, because I found a man who changed my life. Jesus Christ. I bless you. In name of Jesus. But and before we close, I want to give a space for something that's so important. It's not less and not more important than the preaching. It's worship. Sometimes we think that worship is like a just to open and close. No, 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 no. Worship is to reconnect to you with him. Worshiping and telling who he is and how you depend on him. So, do not get out. Do not get out from in the front of, of the screen right now. You know, sing with me, Brad, Jim, and Marie, and uh, Sam, and all of those. Sing the songs. See you next time. I love you. God bless you.